and share the screen. And without further ado, I'm going to hope that's working. I certainly hope that is working today. Please work. Uh, there we are. Well, let's hope you can all see that. And let's for today, 20 ways in which to market your business for free. I hope some of you are sitting there with a cup of coffee, waiting to be entertained, pens at the ready. Well, for those of you who are kind enough to, to uh, give up an hour of your Tuesday, welcome back. For those of you, it's your, your first time, then delighted uh, you're able to, to join us. Uh, we, have a, we have a sort of set, uh, set format um, for our webinars. Um, we uh, have the, uh, the, the capability to use the chat line. As always, we are recording and you will get a copy of the slides. And if you want to say a comment on social media, that's uh, a Twitter handle. And as always, I mentioned, for those of you who like a little bit of one-to-one -one help that is available and free, or oh, sorry, fully funded, I should have said, I can't say the word free. We do have a sort of set pattern. We'll finish on the stroke of three o'clock. During the course of the afternoon, there will be some, hopefully some nuggets for you to take away. There will be some contrived humor as well. Um, we don't tend to signpost that, it just comes out and, um, you know, don't, uh, and uh, so, and the next thing is we always start with a quiz. And I can't, you can't not start with a quiz. The pens at the ready, it is, today is, Guess who? So, who is that? Who is that? Anybody on the chat line wanting to tell me who that is? Yes, Sal's on it today, straight away. That is none other than Jeremy Clarkson. You know, his mother's famous, isn't she? His mother's famous. Didn't she design? Didn't she design? Paddington Bear or something of that ilk, something associated with that. Right, that's another thing. Who's that? Who's that? Another one. Another famous person. Anyone want to tell me who that is? Ooh. Any takers on the chat line? Oh, not today. Right, no problem. Here comes the answer. No less. Patrick Stewart. Famous for being Jean-Luc Picard. Starship Enterprise. Who's that then? For those of you who have to be a certain age group, you don't mind me saying so, or a student of British political history to know who that might be. Anyone want to tell me who that is? Oh yeah, Kevin knows it's Harold, indeed, a former Prime Minister, Harold Wilson. Now some of you are sitting there thinking, what's all this got to do with marketing? Well, we shall see. So who's that then? Who's that? Oh, God, Sal, Sal, the head of the game. Who's that? Let's get a warm-up. It is, it is. It is Team Judy Dench. And last but not least, today's quiz is short and sweet for obvious reasons. Who's that? Oh my God! It is Alan Titchmarsh, and for extra bonus points, then everyone except Sal, what do they all have in common? What do they all have in common? There you go. Little bit of uh, get your get the brain, get the juices flowing. Get the juices, and honestly, they all get, so go on, anyone want to tell me what they all have in common, those five people, and this other gentleman, they were all, oh, there we are, marketing, they are, former, they were all born in Yorkshire, as was Sir Geoffrey, yes, so they're all born in Yorkshire, I think Julie Dent came from, I think came from, um, from York, if I'm not mistaken. So um, there we go. There we go. So let's 
Let's move on to today's uh, uh, webinar. Actually, I thought I was going to be late today. I just down, down, walked into the, t went into the town, and I was getting into my car. And this guy said to me, um, "Can you give me a lift?" I said, "Certainly." I said, "You look great today, sir, and uh, your world's your oyster." Anyway, I had a, God, an interesting weekend. An interesting weekend. I met Kai. I met the guy who introduced, you know, who invented the crossword. Yeah, I can't remember his name though. It was P something P something R. Anyway, and I was quite excited actually the weekend. The weekend, um, I went on a date. Went on a date um, with an anaesthetist. Yeah, she's a local girl. Right, I suppose we better get on with the marketing now. That's it, over with now, actually. Right, I was, I was going to do some jokes about chimneys, but I've got a stack of them, but those were those few were just on the house. Right, let's move on. So, come on, 20 ways in which to market your business for free. And shall we start with number one? Hey, I tell you what, you keep an eye out for these numbers. So, anyone like who's that? Oh, no, that is number one. Anyone want to tell me that is? Of what record he holds? Play on words there. Hmm? Don't get it every webinar, you know. No, no, no one's going to tell me that is. Well, uh, you know, because I'm surprised you don't, because everything I do, I do it for you. Hey, hey. I didn't even, I didn't even script that one. That is Brian Adams. I think I'm right, he was number one record. 16 weeks. Here we go. Let's move on. Let's move on. So first things first. Today's first marketing tip is to have a marketing strategy, no less. And really, there's only of us. I've said this before. So um, those of you who have not seen it, there are only really three ways in which to grow your revenue. Firstly, is to get more customers. Secondly, is to get more sales to existing customers. And thirdly more often people to buy more often not all mutually exclusive but i can't emphasize enough statistically it is far easier quicker cheaper faster and better to get more sales to existing customers so what each of you should have and you'll be on the naughty step if you don't is to have a customer database yes a customer database of which there are many that may form part of a customer relationship management system and many of these are free and you don't get a penny for every time I mention the word free today so the likes of HubSpot, Insightly, Zoho are all free tools in which you can create a customer database not just of people who are buying from you but people who may be prospects or if you may accumulate along the way. So, get yourself a customer database. So number two, who remembers that? Number two, hey, here we go. Remember the days when we used to sit and stare at that? Can you remember that? Yeah, Kevin's right. For those of you who are sitting there somewhat bemused, that was the test card. It used to be on when there was, no, there was no television. They used to sit and watch this. There was music in the background. So yeah, those, those were the days. <laughs> Quite. And do you, know, hey, do you know what that lady looks like now? What she looks like now? Well, you're soon going to... There she is. Look at this. You know, you don't get this. Look at that. There she was. There she is. Yeah. She was famous in our house. We always used to look at her and think, wonder what she, wonder what she called, and there she is. Made it famous, the, the BBC Two S card. Number two's marketing tip today, oops, is to talk to customers. Talk to them, and I mean talk to them. So here's a little challenge for you. How about having a, making yourself a New Year's resolution on this day, or customers maybe try and do at least three a week how does that sound yeah 
actually speak to them. Oh, wouldn't that be radical? Pick up the phone, eh? What are they doing? They're at home working. Would they like the phone to ring? Maybe. But equally as importantly, when you talk to your customers, you're not ringing up to see how they are. How about asking for a referral? Mm. Because uh, my friend Dale Carnegie, actually that reminds me, I must, um, I must try and win friends and influence people. Um, the people were, were wired to actually give referrals if we ask. And it's surprising how many don't. But when you talk to your customers, have a sense of purpose and have, think about asking for a referral. Or better still, as part of number two, you may want to think about actually setting up a referral program. You know, done by the likes of Airbnb, uh, incentivizing their customers to introduce a friend, as have Harry's. So I think that you may want to consider if your business is appropriate to incentivize customers to introduce a friend. So tip one, tip two, and tip three. Anyone? This is the last film I saw on the old telly three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. If you haven't seen it, be open-minded. You need broad mind as well. Great film, great acting, but also interesting about the effective use of billboards and marketing. Couldn't stop laughing during that film. Francis McDormand, a legend, Oscar winner. Right, let's move along. So tip three today is to undertake some email marketing. So if you had to follow tip one, you have a database and you'll be communicating by email with your customers. And here, for the next few moments, I'm going to share with you some of the things you can actually do. You can send out the likes of, of GIFs, which this particular organization have done, or just providing, providing information. I hear about electronic signatures, all very visual, much of the email marketing and these examples here. Mint, credit card, credit, card uh, credit score company, spring is coming, fresh credit scores in the air and clicking through to their website. Company here offering design capabilities. Hello for offering incentives. Another example, which will be out of sync, but you know, a celebration, you know, your database may well have the birthdays of your clients. So how about using your email marketing for that very purpose. The email marketing, alternatively, use it for your newsletter and to send out your blog. So, some, there's some great email marketing programs that you may wish to choose. And these are software programs, which are free. They create, you can create engaging email newsletters, easy to do, drop and drag, and you can automate them to go out. So you can send bulk emails out, a lot of work, and that is marketing automation. And then you can manage your contacts, segment them, and track the performance. So is anybody on today's webinar would like to use the chat line to tell me which free software program they normally use in terms of their email marketing? I've got the next few uh, things. I'm going to share one or two others. Do we have any takers? Well, Sal and Gray are both advocates or users of MailChimp. Well, take a little look at these. Thank you for that. There are other programs. MailChimp has the benefit in many ways of being probably the uh, go-to program, but there's likes of constant Contact, a bit of alliteration there. Send in blue. Many of these uh, are, are built and, and around different forms of marketing uh, in terms of e the use of e-commerce, but well worth looking at. Constant contact, send in blue. Drip, yeah. The, the ubiquitous, good word, it? MailChimp, and also ConvertKit, or five different programs that perform in different ways. Personally, my favorite is constant contact, or if he, I also use the likes of 
as a CRM system HubSpot, and that has inbuilt e e e ma email marketing. But again, free tips there. Many of these are free to a point, and then you're upgrading beyond that. So, number four. Today's fourth tip. Now, who is that? This is, who's that? Come on, somebody, somebody must know who that is. I met him. Oh, yeah. Kevin, Sal, who can ever forget? The sadly late lamented Billy Bremner. Oh, there he is. 1972 Cup Final. You know, story if my pastor met him. I met him when I was a, a wee lad. And I went up to, I was about, I was about, I was about, and I was about as tall as him. Oh, don't say, Lee, don't say, Kevin Lee. They were a bit physical. I must have been a bit physical as a team. I met him and I went up to him. This is at Weatherby it was. And I held out my autograph book. And my hands were shaking. Not that I thought he was going to hit me, but I, I'd met one of my heroes. He always says, never meet one of your heroes. There we go. Billy Bremner, number four. Oh. Those are days. You could those teams. You could, you know, those of you who are football fans, you could remember the name, the players, couldn't you? Because they're great teams. Anyway, let's let's. Some of you are sitting there thinking, this is meant to be a marketing webinar, not a not a Simon kind of uh, delve into the nineteen seventies, right? What's the, what's for? What's a fourth tip? What's a fourth tip? Have a start or do undertake a blog. What is a blog? I hear you cry. Ha <laughs> ha. And why blog? I hear you cry. Well, they should. So it is a form of content marketing. And the principle with blogging is to create value for your customers and help sell your products in a non-salesy way. Are you actually providing information, insight, and people are reading it. And it's actually will then, they would click and link to you or maybe on your website, whatever it is, you're providing value for your customers. So, the likes of Gilles, no less, the best a man can get. They're blogging on their site and giving you a, a one-minute read, five steps to have a smooth shave. So there you go. So there's, a, there's an example. And also the likes of Airbnb. I've got blog. I have mentioned them today. That, you know, get about guest books. And it's fantastic is blogging. The likes of SEO. Because in this, this situation, people asking Google a question, which appears on the page title, as you can see on the screen. And if you're asking Google a question, either with a voice search, you may be able to answer it with your blog, no less. It's also a great way of creating a database. So you can have new, uh, you know, kind of pop-ups on your website, which you're collecting data, and they can subscribe to your database. And even likes of Tesla, my, mine's just parked out in the um, in the driver. It's just been polished by the bottle at the moment. But there is an example. They're, they're blogging as well, you know, talking about how things work. And, and often a great blog starts those three letters, that one word, how. There we are. So, and American Express, you know, about talking about cash flow management. There's an M missing there. You can avoid, so blogging, providing information on your website or on a blogging platform. Again, free thing to do, but very valuable. And even here, for, for a smaller business, I'll give you some big brands there, but you know, using the likes of a commercial locksmith there, what is a locksmith and about the different systems, cutting keys, that would have, just appears on a small business website as well. The interesting facts about commercial locksmiths. So, Number four, what's channel five? Yeah, channel five. Number five, what's today's fifth tip? Three, here we go. Using video, YouTube, second biggest search engine, Google products, and the creation of video. Now, we are going to cover video in more detail in subsequent webinars. And some, one of the questions I'm often asked is, well, I go out there with my phone and I... And I uh, create some video well you know i want to convert it into something a little bit more professional well video editing many of what you see and you're on the screen in front of your very eyes 
Uh, no, you'll get a copy of the slides. You can see a number of editing software programs you can use for free. For the DaVinci one, you don't need a code. Uh, so you can use many of these to create professional video. I do have a favorite, but you know, we're here not to promote, we're here to give you general advice. There we are. Yeah. So creating video. For many, it's very common for to use the likes of, of, uh, of video to impart information. Why? Why are here, you ask? Well, this think about today. 20% people remember, 20% of what they hear, 30% of what they see, and yet 70% of what they see and hear. A picture tells a thousand words, but a video tells you a lot more. One of the most um, inspirational quotes made it up. There we go, so see and hear, and people are consuming more video. And it's considered from the last survey that I read, you know, in Family Fortunes, our survey said, how do you most prefer to learn about a new product? Of course, I prefer Family Fortunes when it's Bob and Cast, you know. I did like Bob. Anyway, how do you most prefer to learn about a new product or service? And there you are, a short video. So thinking about your own business, you might wish to portray it by creating a video. Now, there's not an exp you might end up not always thinking you're going to be um, creating the latest Hollywood production. And it may end up looking a little bit like the Blair Witch Project. That's the original film. But, you know, don't worry about that because, you know, there's so much video out there. The one thing to concentrate on is, the, is whether it's sound and also the use of subtitles. Many people consume video also looking at subtitles. But you see, it's probably the preferred way in which to market product or service. So let's move on. Number six. Hey, come on, man. Going to sit here for a moment. I'm going to have a drink. And who's going to go on the chat line and tell me who that is? I'm not a number. I am free. Oh, come on, somebody. Hey, show me age. Show me age. I'm going to, come on, Sal, you know, yeah, Andrea, I knew, I knew we let me, the prisoner, the prisoner, it, that's, that's half a point, half a point for the prisoner. Number six, Patrick McGowan, oh, what a program, that, come on, some of you are sitting there thinking, I don't remember it, well, a, a very influential program, oh, come so, the prisoner. Number six, a tip six, is to try and get yourself onto the first page of Google. Now, this actually strictly isn't free, but we're going to come on to tip seven might help you out. To get onto pay per click, there are lots of offers out there. We can spend money with Google. And there you are. Often go to Twitter, look elsewhere, look onto your Google My Business, and you'll see Google are often offering you the opportunity to spend a few pennies with them. And you know, there's even an 0800 number. You can ring Google up and they'll help you along. You may end up spending a small sum of money in this situation. I spent 25 pounds and got a hundred pounds worth of PPC. And then I set up my Google Analytics and voila, return on investment. So now Facebook, is also a very inexpensive way. And you can see the cost per click Facebook advertising is very low. So again, a very inexpensive way, not free and print, to actually use to target an audience if you are your, if your uh, product market sector suits Facebook. So let's move on to the Magnificent Seven. There we go. You know, that's always the old pub quiz. Can you, can you name them all? You know, but you can see the order of hierarchy there. Yeah, the order of hierarchy on the screen. Yeah, Yule Brynner was the star. Yeah. He actually, he quick, he quick sidebar, he resented Steve McQueen there because Steve McQueen was brought up on a farm and he could fire a gun properly and quickly. There we go. Quick story. So tip seven is about SEO and undertaking keyword research. Now, here are four free tools that you can use ascertain the keywords 
that will assist you in actually trying to seek being on higher in the Google rankings or the golden fleece to be on the front of first page. So look on those platforms. Once you have your keywords, then what? Well, you'll add them in to the page title or the title tag, and you'll then add them into the meta description. So that's what you'd naturally do. And then in the hierarchy of activities, you'll add them to your header tags, the body content, and then in to any images that support the copy. So in your alt text. There's four platforms there to use, a little bit of keyword research and help yourself along. So that was tip seven. And you can optimize, once you know your keywords, you can use them in social media directories or any other listings. Robert is a relative. So Bob's your uncle. The tip after eight, oh, I do like it. Number tip eight, how come between you and me, how often do you eat them and you put the wrapper back in the box? Here, I do. I'm always getting in trouble for it though. I have to whisper that one. So after eight, is to be, no, tip eight is to be on Google My Business. If you have a business that you'd like to be on a local search, is to make sure you're on Google My Business as seen here for this particular dry cleaning business in the United States, in Massachusetts, which the Bee Gees want to learn about. So, fresh and clean dry tailoring here as well. A, more, a better possible example there is to register your business with Google via Google My Business, and you will be hopefully in the top three searches, in local searches, there. So to be registered with Google My Business and to use it proactively because you can post on it, you can, you can link it, you can, and it's the engine room for generating Google reviews and also would link to your Google Maps. And within the body of Google My Business, it operates as a microsite and for the princely sum of £10, you can get yourself a little website as well, courtesy of Google. So being on Google My Business is a fantastic free way in which to market business and to generate interest locally. But let's move on to number nine. Yeah. Who's that? Do you know those? None of the I can't hear you. Beethoven. Number nine. Now there's there's four. There's if number the ninth symphony was his last symphony, and I think there's four other composers who was who only did nine symphonies that were considered it was considered unlucky. It fated because they never got past the ninth. The uh, the shuffled off the mortal coil after that. There we go. Tip nine. Position zero. Now this is not the Karma Sutra here. Oh, we're getting into trouble with saying that. Is it, you don't does anyone know what position zero is? We just have a little look on the chat line. Does anyone know what position zero? I'm looking on the chat line. Anybody know what position zero is? No. Any takers? No. Nope. Let me show you. Three. To be position zero, known as a featured snippet. So often you'll ask Google or type a question or type in, and you get that on the screen which is known as a featured snippet. Often it appears that there's a Google Ads and the featured snippets, and you could be there too, no less. So you, there are a featured snippet, as it says there, are answers that appear in the search results and are pulled from the website. Summary, details, and the URL. The great places to be, especially now that many people are using Siri, or as appears in my kitchen, Alexa, to make a voice search so for your website or your blog you may wish to design content to answer a question you can to hold a rank in the search engines and it's just a list the next time you want to think about putting content that has a question and an answer that's very google friendly especially if you're using uh, your keyword research you're getting a featured snippet on the first page of google now, wouldn't that be something? Oh, and it's free as well. 
just take the time. So let's move on to 10. <laughs> Do you know who they are? Yes, I sure if they're in the film 10. Dudley Dudley. Yay. And Bo, oh, I remember that, 1979, show me age here. So number 10. What's today's 10th tip? Is to make sure that you are registered on many business directories. Let your fingers do the walking. So, sure, that they're Yelp, Yellow Pages, and there are numerous other business pages. Register with a directory. One of the ones you can go to, apart from Google My Business, is to make sure you're on Bing places for business. So, okay, registered there. A link back to your website, generate reviews, great thing to do, and free. Let's move on to number 11. Do you know who that was? I think, I think it might be saying, is that either, is that Neil or Buzz? Not sure. Oh, there we are. Here's a quick bit of trivia about, about the Apollo 11 moon landing. It also sparked the question about um, the third man. Do you know who the third man was on that moon landings? Did you know take us there? Was Michael Collins, I believe. And he actually won, I think he has a Guinness Book of Records claim to be the world's remotest man from another fellow human being when he was orbiting the Earth. With those two there and the rest six billion of us here. There we go. Right, let's have a little look. Oh, yeah. Oh. 11 customer satisfaction how about conducting a customer survey great way of either using a newsletter as or, or, or you know email marketing to think there's some fantastic tools so again on the screen you find eight tools to use many of you may have used survey monkey but there are others um there you get a good heartbeat yeah without wixie and uh, all eight eight tools to use, uh, many of uh, low cost tools to use, creating out, sending surveys out to your customers. Great way to gather information, keep in contact with your customers. 12, 12 angry men. You might have worked out now, I like films. If you are, if you, this is the classic. Saturday afternoon, it's raining kind of film, but a great story of a man who changed the mind of, an, oh, giving the plot away here, man who influenced 11 others. Great film, Henry Fonda. So it's, oh, it's, you know, it's taking me half an hour to talk about social media. Were well, you expecting that? Let's see. Social media, you know the biggest mistake I think many businesses face with social media is they post, 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 and post but they don't engage. But tomorrow, when you're next looking at your social media, don't post, engage. Great way in which to, well, engage. Here are the likes of Benetton and the others, the, the linking through their website to what's happening elsewhere in Instagram. And, and you, you think that what you'd do is look on your social media platforms and look towards engaging with your followers and your influencers as opposed to posting. So often you would use social media here to promote your posts, but the key thing is often to directly have dialogue with your followers. You can run polls, request feedback, you can take long form of content and put it there. But principally what I'm encouraging you to do is actually to use others, others posts and others material and engage with that. Don't be the pub bore, talk back as opposed to talk to. So, 13, Friday the 13th, oh yes, day to stay in bed, is very much to focus on you tagging people in to your posts. Many, many businesses I see are always posting invariably on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and are not involving others. So you would think about people you're likely to tag into a post using the at sign. So 
Think about your suppliers. Geographically, think about your neighboring, not spelled incorrectly, companies. You meet your partners, not necessarily your, not your uh, uh, anyone associated with business, your, some of your loyal customers or those you consider to be brand evangelists. You may be using them to ask a question, to engage with them, to, to refer to them, but actually then you're going to create greater impact in your posts. But also, even if you are tagging people in, referring them to something. So think about a great way in which to, a free tip, something to do is to tag people in. And also to encourage your followers to tag your social media handle or business location in their posts. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to raise awareness through others. So tag people in. Also to effectively use the hashtags. So you might want to look at things like hashtagify me, there's a great site in which to learn the, and find the popular posts that, tag, tag, that are trending. But you want to think about broad and trending hashtags, specific hashtags, like long tail keywords, which could be questions that appear in a blog or on a featured snippet. And then, you know, virtually every post, think about the location and even create your own hashtags. But not to overface them either. They work well in Instagram when you put up to 30, but sometimes you see them being used too extensively on LinkedIn and on Twitter. So, you know, judiciously use them, use them wisely. So, but you can use them in this type of situation where, you know, you're, you know, you're running competitions, you know, uh, and, and some of the posts you can do there, like if you want to do it, encourage people actually reply using the hashtag right tip 14 because there are 14 clubs in a golf bag I, you know i'm a member of a golf club and they were in lockdown oh my golly do i miss it goodness gracious and there's tw with his son yes cut on the same cloth no less so our 14th tip is to use infographics of many of which you can find it's a visual representation remember we spoke earlier picture tells a thousand words there's a very busy one on the screen but you can use infographics for your social media posts or your website the way of doing it they are eye candy easier to digest not a great example previously people like to share them great way of building brand and they can become evergreen content there's lots of places to go in which to create infographics and on the screen now are three free places in which you can use software to create some infographics don't write boring words make it fun make it engaging make it different for people to share if you want information in terms of data, there's plenty of places to go. Data, the census, UNICEF, WHO, any of your local trade organizations. Har harvest some data, share it, talk about what it may mean to you in your industry. And so often infographics work well if they're accompanied by that. Oh, and if you're gonna post them, you can always tag in the organization who provided it for you. Mm, double whammy. Let's talk about number 15 in our today's free tip. Now, who's a rugby fan? I look here thinking, look at those three great fullbacks. Remember them? Who's a rugby fan on today's webinar? Any four? Yes. Kevin JPR. Wasn't he a great player? Who else have we got? Any, anyone French on here today? Oh, Andrea, this is, this is Scott, it was his brother, Gavin. He had JPR Williams, oh, Gavin Hastings, and the incompatible Serge Blanco. Oh, them were the days. Oh, gosh, don't you miss them. Right, tip 15. What have we got to use the likes of this? and quotes and to spice up a lot of your social media here and using memes. Rather than just post bland, 
copy. A use quote, there's lots to do. You can find many on the likes of Canva and elsewhere to use memes. Number 16. They are, I didn't know there was 192 months if you're 16. Think about PR. There's much free PR you can have out there. Here is an example of a company that I, uh, I'm working with that have made a revolutionary face shield that's got a, an antibacterial coating. So COVID-19 friendly, as it were, if that's the right phrase to use, it, it doesn't, no bacteria will settle on the face shield. And they just got into the local paper and then it was syndicated around the UK. A little local story there. There's lots of things out there. And these are websites where you can go to actually have your story put forward. PR Newswire, you can see them on the screen. Places to go where you can put stories. Or how many of you ever used help a reporter out? Journalists are seeking content. So you create content, you create something that's very PR friendly, like antimicrobial face shields. And how about going to help a reporter out to actually get your story going? And what's wrong with being on the radio? Yes, video may have killed the radio star, but again, a radio is a place to go. That they often seek experts and fantastic to be interviewed on the radio, especially if you've got an innovative human story. That's number 16, PR. 17. 17. This was my 17th birthday. I had a driving lesson on my 17th birthday. And that was the car I used to drive. Knew anyone want to tell me that car is? I wish, it, I, wish I could see it. It's in the scrap, the scrap heap in the sky. Anyone? Any takers as to what that might be on the right? I learned to drive in that. Yes. We should take my first girlfriend out in it. Mm. Not saying any more of that story. It's an opal. An opal pet. Oh, yes. You have a radio in it. And we, we even tried to, we fitted a cassette tape in. Oh, to wind the windows down. Oh, oh, nostalgia. 17. So let's talk about tenders. <laughs> tenders. How about finding tenders? Now some of you are thinking, hang on a second, Simon, I've got tenders don't mean anything to me. Well, you can go on to likes of contracts finder. And there are lots of tenders out there. Who's the biggest spender of money in this country? Yes, indeed. Rishi. So Rishi's only going at spending lots of money, and lots of contracts will appear on contracts fine and you might think oh hang on a second i'm not interested if they're building schools because i can't bid for that yes that's true you probably may not be able to but you may be a subcontractor to the, to the company or a subcontractor to the subcontractor think about using tenders to find out where the money is so to take a quote from tom cruise in jerry Maguire. Show me the money and you can find it here. There's also plenty of places to go here where there's contracts under £10,000 and they appear in other portals. I will reveal those at next week's webinar on sales. 18, 18, the year you can legally vote. Gosh, remember the first days when we used to vote and things haven't changed since. Piece of paper, grubby pencil in a school playground, in a school classroom. Oh, things haven't moved on. Technology hasn't moved on. So you may wish to use number tip 18 because there's plenty of business awards and, and to get your PR and to attend those. To be involved in your local community, part of the circular economy. And an important part of that is your CSR and your social responsibility to align yourself with local charities. I work with a hospice, and I'm often giving them help and guidance, but they are sharing, retweeting a lot of what you do. So it's a, it's a two-way street. So think about 18, to being part of your community and to be involved with local good causes. No, 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 19. 
Who remembers that? You know, in 1965, Vietnam, see that, just another war. Can you remember that? Groundbreaking song. They were the days when we used to sit round and watch Top of the Pops. No, no, 19. Who sang that then? Who, who, sorry, who performed that? Who's credited with that one? Any takers there? Again, none other than Paul Hardcastle. We had Brian Adams to Paul Hardcastle, for number 19. So today's 19th tip is what? I can't remember as well. There we go. Find yourself some influencers. There are lots of sites you can go on because you can put as much content out there and you can engage as many people you like, but there'll always be somebody who's got a large following who may well be an influencer for you. There are lots of places to go. Here's an example on BuzzSumo to look for influencers relating to you on certain platforms. And here, there's also ones for, for finding out Twitter users. But my, you know, and here, Trendspotter will help you if you're on Instagram, look towards finding out where there's potential influencers and where there's trending hashtags. A personal favorite I've used is Hootsuite, a great tool again to find influencers, to find trending areas and those you can engage with. So what comes after 19? Well, it's gonna to come to number 20. Bullseye, not 20, 20 on a dartboard. Hey, here's a good trivia question for you. Do you know, what's the smallest number you can't get with one dart? You don't know? What number, what's the smallest number you cannot achieve with one dart? Do you know the answer to that? Good one, isn't it? Good little trivia question. Anybody know the answer to that one before we have to move on? Because it's coming to the end. 23. 23. You need two darts to hit 20, to achieve 23. There we go. Because 11 is 22 and 24 is 212. So there we are. 23. Did you know that one? I think you did. Right. So, fun farewell to Sal. Thank you for attending. So, that's the 20th tip is how about trying some guerrilla marketing? Do something radical. Let's shake the tree. Here are great examples, not as free, but very low cost. But a towel that's been used, talking about the benefits of, or the challenges of, of sunscreen. So great, fantastic image there. Here, we're using also people ripping off and tearing off relating to Weight Watchers and things. Great way, guerrilla marketing, signage up. The good old days, we used to go and visit somewhere where your brand is there. I've seen stuff on pavements in different places where you can go to get your brand in front of people. Some sort of revolutionary tactics. But try, how about some guerrilla marketing? There's lots that can be done for very low cost. You're actually, you know, barging your way and being on the radio is a form of guerrilla marketing. And here, people selling surfboards. Very clever ways you know in, in shark week here using your product in a very creative way and these making some of these making some of these products here great images and you're drawing attention to a worthwhile cause but also with a very clever visual message so something there to get your teeth into shark week so well, there's more. No, no twist here. There's no more boy today. Thank you very much. That's 20 tips in terms of free marketing. So what's next? Well, as always, it's getting around to that time of day where it's afternoon tea, crumpets. As I mentioned earlier, if you want a marketing one-to-one, -one, each and every one of the attendees will get copies of the slides. And then we have next week to look forward to. And next week, it's all about the Anedian line. It's going to be talking all about sales. 
all the latest sales trends and all the things that we can be doing. So without further ado, I'm going to stop that. I'm going to invite anyone who has any questions who would like to ask today before I sign off. Let's have a little wait on the chat line. Well, thank you, Andrea. Hope you found that helpful. I didn't miss some of the jokes, but we don't mind that. Thank you very much. Really kind of you.